welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your transformation guru, Samya Bano. Are you overcoming big challenges in your life? Do you want to transform the world? Is fear holding you back from taking the bold action you need to create massive positive change? If so, Keep listening and transform that fear into freedom. Hey, welcome back to the Survivor to Thriver show. Last episode, we're talking about when we have big dreams and they get really scary for us. Why? Because the big dreams that we have They challenge us. They challenge us big time to step outside of our comfort zones, step into the unknown, do things that we have never done before. All kinds of doubts can come up. Am I good enough? For this? Do I know enough? Do I have enough? And when these fears, these doubts come up, what are the choices that you have? You can either give in and give up in the face of those fears and forget about your dreams, your visions, your goals, or you must figure out a way to deal with the fears, to deal with the doubts, to overcome them, to manage them. And why just think about managing and overcoming the fears? Why not Think about transforming the fears. If you can effectively transform your fears, you will have also managed them. You have, will have also overcome them in a way. But you will have done so much more than just manage or overcome the fears. And I want to really encourage you to make transformation your goal rather than just managing your fear or even just breaking through your fear. I want you to make transformation your goal. Well, that's my recommendation. That's my invitation. Let me tell you why I'm making this invitation to you. Like, what's my reasoning? Look, this is a survivor to thriver show. See, if all you want to do in your life is survive through life's challenges then you just need to do what's good enough to get you by. To just allow you to survive through the challenge that you're dealing with. But I'm not interested in just surviving through my life. I want to thrive in my life. And because you are listening to the show, I know that is also true for you. So if you were to just survive through life in the context of how you deal with your fears, you would just learn better skills for how to manage the fear, right? How, maybe even how to break through the fear. 
But if you truly are going to thrive in your life, that's not good enough. That's when you need to learn to transform the fear. Why? Because think about it. As long as you're thinking about, okay, I'm going to manage my fear. I must learn to manage my fear. What is the underlying mindset? What's the underlying consciousness um, or, or the sort of um, the relationship, the un- unconscious relationship that you have with your fear? Is fear your friend or is fear your enemy? Is fear a good thing or is fear a bad thing? See, people in survivor mode and who are satisfied with staying in survivor mode, going through their lives in survivor mode, have this mindset. Whether they recognize it consciously or not, they have this mindset where they believe that fear is a bad thing. And they relate to their fear as their enemy. And when you have an enemy, when you think, perceive someone or something as your enemy, how do you respond? How do you relate to that enemy? How do you respond to that enemy? There are two primary responses that are actually programmed into us. They're deeply rooted into our instincts. What are those two responses? Can you think of of what those two responses are? If you're thinking fight or flight, you're right. Fight or flight. You perceive your fear as your enemy. You think the fear is a bad thing. Your natural tendency, your natural instinct is going to be either to fight it. Like it's an enemy, like it's a bad thing. Or to run away from it. To deny it. To try and suppress it, ignore it. Either way, there are major problems that you can run into if these are the primary strategies with which you are dealing with your fear. For most people, not only are these their primary strategies, but they're their only strategies. So what's the problem with the fight or flight responses? Well, let's consider the fight options first. Okay, because you're like, okay, like, fight, surely. What, What could be wrong, like, you know, if I'm going to choose to fight with my fear? Isn't that a good thing? Doesn't that mean, like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm choosing to be strong and like choosing to act with courage and all that. Isn't that a good thing that I'm going to choose to fight rather than give up and give in to my fear? Well, in a way, yeah, certainly. Look, I'm not saying the fight or flight responses are absolutely useless or there's no good in them. They're There's no benefit in them. They have their usefulness. They have their utility. But they also have constraints. Right? So I want you to think about what are those constraints? Now, if you're thinking about the fight response. You know, when I was going through my self-defense training. That's right. 
I have uh, been through uh, self-defense training. In fact, I trained to also become a self-defense instructor. But that, uh, maybe we'll talk about that uh, another day. Why did I bring up the self-defense training? It's because I remember a lesson that one of my teachers, my self-defense uh, instructors, shared with me. And to this day, like I remember that lesson. It has made a huge impact um, in my life. My teacher said, the best fights are the ones that never happen. The best fights are the ones that never happen. Why? Because when there is a fight, someone always gets hurt. Even if you are going to win the fight, you are still at a huge risk of getting hurt. And maybe getting hurt very badly. And if by some miracle you don't get hurt, there's still someone else who gets hurt. Someone always gets hurt in a fight. So the best fights are the ones that never happen. Now we were, we were learning this in the context of self-defense training. For the most part, we understood this lesson in the context of physical fighting. But what I realized and recognized is that it's also true about fighting in a mental emotional context. When we choose to fight our fears, it takes up a lot of energy and time and it's scary and it's hard. We're fighting an uphill battle, possibly a losing battle. But even if you put aside all that, because there are many times in our lives when we may choose to do something that's really hard. Because there's something else that we value a lot more than ease. So that's not the biggest objection to the fight your fear approach. It's hardness, right? The bigger objection is the knowing that, hey, you know, there's a reason why we're feeling afraid. There's a very, if you're feeling afraid, there's a very good reason why you're feeling afraid. You're not crazy. That, you know, you're just feeling afraid for no good reason. There is a good reason why you're feeling afraid. There's a reason why fear is one of the emotions. One of the primary emotions that's part of our psychology. And the reason is that the fear is part of our internal alarm system that warns us when we are at risk, when our safety is at risk. So if you decide to fight your fear and in, in fighting with that fear you ignore or you try to ignore the warning that your fear is trying to give you of the danger, of the threat to your safety, you're taking a huge risk that you're going to get hurt because you're ignoring that warning. You're ignoring that threat to your safety. 
taking a huge risk that you're going to get hurt. Even if you win the fight of, you know, like overcoming your fear in, in that sense, winning over your fear and taking the action you're afraid to take, but then you get seriously hurt because you ignored the warning, the threat to your safety. You know, like a really quick analogy here could be, let's say you look down a cliff, the edge of a cliff, and you feel afraid of falling. But you say, no, I'm going to fight my fear. I'm going to jump anyway. And you just jump, and then you hit the bottom, and there's sharp rocks down there. So yeah, you won over your fear and you jumped, you did what you were afraid to do, but you hit the bottom, hit those sharp rocks, and now you're grievously injured, possibly dead. Is that what you want? Like now imagine now imagine luckily you're lucky enough that you're not actually dead, you're just grievously injured. Can you imagine? You're, you're lying in the hospital, struggling uh, to recover, to survive the, those injuries. And what's going through your mind? It's like, how stupid could I be? Why did I jump? Why did I not listen to my fear? Why didn't I respect my fear? So when you choose to fight your fear, you're taking a huge risk. Plus, it's really hard. So why would you want to fight your fear? Think about that. All right? Now, we're going to continue this conversation in the next episode, and I want you to really think about it. Think about it. Why would you want to fight your fear? Why? Uh, and maybe there's another option. Ha, huh, yeah, what's the other option? If you don't fight our fear, what else can we do? So let's talk about those other options next episode. In the meanwhile, if this is something you're struggling with, if you're fighting with your fears and maybe starting to feel a little silly for doing it, but you don't know what else to do, Please don't continue to struggle with it. Reach out for help and support. And you know I'm one person you can reach out to. Just go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com. Click on the contact us page and you'll see how we can connect. So until next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.